Okay, let's say I'm given some information on some ratings of a female professor versus a male professor, and I want to see if there appears to be a difference, okay, in their means. So they're, of course, independent of each other. So there's different ways you could test this. You could test it with a hypothesis test, or you could test it with a confidence interval, which is what I'm going to do. So you can see the confidence interval here. I'm going to be looking at the difference between the two sample means and actually see if there's a difference that I would consider in the population. Now, as you can see with the formula, I have a plus and minus an error. This is the formula for the error, so I'm going to need to compute all this information. So I don't have N1, which is just my sample size. I'm just going to tell it to count it. I just like this count formula because I'm kind of too lazy to sit here and go one, two, three, and so on. I'm going to do the same thing for the mill. I'm going to do the count and count how many values are there. All right, hopefully by now you know how to find the mean. That's the average of the female. And then the mean, the average of the male. Oops, that went too far. And now I need my standard deviation. Now, if you're using the newer version of Excel, be sure you're using the dot S for a sample, not the dot P, but I'm just going to use the STDEV. And I get my standard deviation. And finally, for the males, my standard deviation. Okay, so it uh, looks like I have everything I need. Alpha, level of significance, 0.05. The degrees of freedom is the smaller of these two values minus 1. Well, I think you can see the smaller is 12, and then I'd subtract 1. However, why not make a formula so now I could go in and change these numbers for like a test question or a quiz, a quiz question, a homework question. So let's put a formula that says find the minimum of my two degree, my two sample sizes, so I put a comma in between them, and whatever that minimum value is, subtract 1. So we can see that it sh we should get 11, right? There we go, 12 minus 1. Okay, now the critical value. Now, a lot of this kind of depends on if you have the newer, the older um, Excel. If you have the newer Excel, it's kind of easier because now what they've done is they have created the t.inv.2tail. So I have the two tail here where I put in my probability and I put in my degrees of freedom. So I no longer have to divide by two because they updated this with a two tail. And so I get my degrees of freedom. Now, if you use the t.inv and you don't use the two tail, then what you would have to do is divide your alpha by 2, and then I get my same value. Now, the only reason why I mention this, notice that's negative. That's going to make a difference. It'll flip your upper and lower. So if you have the newer, I would use the dot 2t. Now, let's say you don't have the newer Excel. The older Excel has the t inv. Notice the probability, 0 0.05, the degrees of freedom, so T, I, and V, my alpha, my degrees of freedom. Notice the old only did a, a, the two tail. Okay, so that's why you kind of have to finagle it if you have a one tail, but it works perfectly for here, so all that looks good. All right, I don't really need that one since I'm going to use this one here. So now to find my error... It's, it tells me in my formula that I can see right there to take my T critical, so that's my T critical value, times the square root of my S1 squared divided by my N1, okay, my sample size, and then plus my S2 squared divided by my sample size 
And then I close the parentheses of my square root. And let's see if this formula is going to work without any other parentheses. And it looks like it did good. So that this is my error. So now how do we find the upper and lower confidence interval? Well, it's always the sample minus the error, the sample plus the error. It's just in this case, I want to take the difference in my sample means. So in other words, I'm going to take this mean minus this mean and then subtract my error, which is right there. So the two means, and I get this value, and now I do the same thing. I do mean one minus mean two, but now I add the error. So this is my plus or minus error. And so the rule is here is if your confidence intervals contain zero, and it does. You remember a number line from negative? If you're going from negative to zero, I'm, I'm to zero. If you're going from negative to positive, then zero is in that interval. And then that would state that there is not a significant difference between the two sample means, which suge suggests that the two population means are equal. So in other words, there's not really a difference in the evaluation scores between female professors and male professors. Now, if this went from negative to another negative value and never zero wasn't contained in this interval, then we would say there was an actual difference.